Tonight we're at Tony's Hot Rod Shop. As you can see, we've got the travel wall behind us. Some of you have seen that in some previous videos. Uh, the guys are working real hard on getting that back together. Um, it's got the 5.3 LS. Um, just got a cam in it, nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, but it's gonna be a cool, cool little driver. Uh, it's on a 05 Yukon frame, so all the modern components there. It should be a, should be a really sweet car. So we've got three different primers we're going to test here. Uh, we've got VP2050, we've got Tamco HP5310, and then we've got the Squeegee's High Build Epoxy. Now there is some differences between these products. Uh, the 2050 and the Tamco are hybrids, which means they're not technically an epoxy uh, as far as epoxy properties, metal protection, things like that. They probably won't be as good as in metal protection as say a, a true epoxy and, and squeegee is, is a one-to-one -one epoxy primer. There's a 30 minute induction period, which means when you mix that product one-to-one, -one, you need to shake it up. You need to let it sit in the, in the cup for at least 30 minutes. And, and basically those chemicals just kind of start to kick before the product's actually sprayed. And that's, that's one thing that they really want you to do with this primer is the 30 minute induction period. What we're gonna do is I've got these uh, one foot by one foot metal panels that we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna weigh each primer, weighed exactly for how they recommend to mix so that there's no discrepancy and oh, you went all, you know, instead of one ounce, you might have gone an ounce and a quarter. That can mess with, we're trying to be as scientific as possible with this test. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna mix each product properly. We're gonna give it any induction period that it needs. And then we're gonna do three coats of each product on three different panels. After we spray, I'm gonna use this wet mill thickness gauge. We're gonna check wet mill thickness on each product. And then I'm gonna take it right to the scale and we're gonna weigh the entire panel wet. And we're gonna measure weight loss also. And a lot of guys will, you know, they'll put their primer in a cup They'll leave it in the PPS cup and that's their shrink test. Well, that'll tell you something, but it's not very accurate. You'll never, you'll never have a mill thickness of a hockey puck. Uh, so what we're trying to do here is basically just be much more accurate as far as which primer shrinks, which primer shrinks more, which primer shrinks less, solids content, stuff like that. So here I've got my panel with the VP2050 on it. I'm gonna do a wet mill thickness test. And some of you guys have seen these gauges, some of you haven't. Basically, I'm gonna, it's a comb, they call it. I'm gonna stick this down in this wet primer and there's, this comb is one mil, this comb is two, as you can see, all the way up to, you know, 40, 80, whatever the numbers are here. Uh, they're not gonna be that high, but uh, we'll, see what it, we'll see what we've got here. So. What I'm gonna do is just dab this in there. So we've got we've got six mils for sure. So now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna dab it. So we've got 12 mils for sure. And I would say we're at about 14 mils. If you can look at that, this uh, this little dot right here is the last dot and that is 14 mils wet film build now i'm going to take this over to the scale and we're going to weigh this wet so i've got my scale zeroed here i've got my vp 2050 test panel we're going to see what this weighs this entire panel weighs 831.3 so we're going to log that and we'll go on to the tamco here so here i've got my panel with the tamco hp 5310 primer uh, i want to add all of these i'm doing three coats uh, out of the recommended fluid tip size <clears throat> so we're gonna do this we've got six for sure we're gonna come here we've got 12 we're gonna come here it looks like we've got about 12 maybe 13 that if you can see it that uh right there that that 14 mark looks like it barely might have just thought about touching so we'll call it 13 ish 14 mils wet thick build wet film build so uh as of now i would say this is comparable to 2050 wet film build 
but we'll see what happens. We're gonna go weigh this and uh, we'll see how much weight this loses. So I've got my scale zeroed. I've got my Tamco panel here. I'm gonna weigh it. And this one is at 830.4. So we'll log that and then we'll go on to our squeegees. So here I've got the squeegees, high build epoxy. Uh, we're gonna do our wet mill thickness test. So we've got six. We've got 12. And I would say roughly the same, you can see that little mark there where the 14 just barely touched, I would say we're at that 13 to 14 mil range. So this kind of surprises me that all these primers have about the same wet film build. Uh, I was really expecting quite a variety of, of film builds here. So that's very interesting. So we've got our scale zeroed. We're gonna put our uh, squeegees panel on this scale. And this panel weighs 830.1. So the all these all these primers really are very close. Uh, all these panels are roughly the same size, 18 gauge. So all these primers are really uh, fairly close as far as wet weight, uh, you know, per area. I'll say this is one square foot. Uh, again, I'm, I'm kind of surprised at uh, how close they are in weight as well. One thing that I want to talk about a little bit is the resin content. So if you look at these activators, this is a 7050, this is the activator for 2050. If I pour this out, pour a little bit out, you can see it's like molasses. It literally looks like molasses, it's super thick. Uh, a lot of people would pour that out and go, wow, this is not right, this can't be right. It is right. There's very high resin content in 2050, which is one thing that is gonna help with shrinkage quite a bit. Now, this Tamco activator, if I pour it in a cup, it's just like any 2K urethane activator. It's, uh, you know, just hardly any more thick than water. It's uh, real watery. Probably not a lot of resin content in that would be my guess. A lot of solvents, which solvents leave, and that's one main thing that causes shrinking is the solvents are leaving and it's actually tightening up and it's losing weight because those solvents are leaving. That's why we're testing weight is to really measure how much solvent has left. And also in this test at the end, we're going to do a dry film build test. Once these products have all stopped losing weight, which means they have, they're done shrinking, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a dry film build test on each product as well to see, to compare wet film build to dry film build. Well, that kind of concludes our first part of our primer shrink test. Uh, at this point, we're gonna let these dry uh, until they stop losing weight. It might be a few days, it might be a week, it might be three weeks. I don't know. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna let them kind of dry in here for a couple days. We'll, 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 we'll do these tests each day, weigh them, do some dry film build tests each day. And then from here, after uh, maybe a week, we'll, we'll see how much they've shrunken. We'll put them, start putting them out in the sun and really bake in them panels and really, really see how much, uh, how much weight they're gonna lose and how much mill thickness they're gonna lose as they shrink because everything shrinks. It's part of the drying process. Everything shrinks, everything is contracting, there's solvents leaving almost no matter what type of uh, product you're spraying, it has solvents in it. That's how it. Uh, that's how you get it through the gun. It, you know? So um, make sure you check out the uh, Linear Live next week, Monday at 6.30. Uh, we're gonna try to talk about this shrink test a little more and we're gonna talk about a lot of stuff that you guys like to talk about. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, so if there's something you wanna talk about, uh, give us a message or comment, let us know, and we'll try to get to that. Uh, also with the Linear Live, we're gonna hopefully be doing more hands-on type stuff, maybe actually doing some working on stuff, explaining a little bit about what's really happening, and we'll see you then.